Hello everyone in Cardio Minds channel and after we discussed how to prescribe ACE and ARBs we are discussing today how to prescribe ARNI standing for the Sacobitrel Valsartan combination. As we mentioned in the last video that our main reference is the supplementary data in the 2021 EC guidelines for heart failure and an important note that these recommendations represent expert opinion based on relevant clinical trials and clinical experience. As we learned from the last video that our questions here is why you prescribe this medication, in whom and when, which medication and what dose, where do we prescribe it, how to use it, problem solving, and the advice that we need to give to the patient. I want just to remind you that you need to watch this video of prescribing ACE and ARB before watching this video and I have put a link here that you can see in order to go directly to this video. As we learned from the last video that Sacobatrel which is an aprilisin inhibitor and Valsartan which is an angiotensin receptor blocker are recommended as a class 1 but as a replacement for ACE inhibitor in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction to reduce hospitalization and death. So the first question why do we prescribe it? to improve symptoms and exercise capacity in the patient, to reduce the risk of heart failure, hospitalization, and to increase survival. The second question, in whom and when? The indications for ARNI are clear. Patient with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction as a replacement for ACE or ARP, but it may be considered in those with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, in those who are ACE or ARP naive, as we mentioned, as there are some clinical trials that suggest the start of ARNI in hospitalized patients before discharge, even if they are not taking ACE or R before. But what about the contraindications of ARNI? We need to focus here in order to know who are the patients that we should not prescribe ARNI for them. Of course, the same contraindications for ACE, like history of angioedema, bilateral renal artery stenosis, pregnancy, non allergic reaction, or other adverse reaction are still contraindications for ARNI, but we need to add the patient with estimated GFR less than 30 milliliter per minute because here, of course, the risk of worsening kidney function and risk of hyperkalemia would be high, so this is a cut point to prescribe ARNI to be above 30. Symptoms of hypotension or systolic blood pressure less than 90 because in the paradigm heart failure, the enrolled patient with systolic blood pressure more than 95 at randomization and in patients with chronic liver disease child C are preferred not to have ARNI and don't forget to be cautious if you are switching a patient from ACE inhibitor to ARNI we need to have a washout period of at least 36 hours in order to minimize the risk of angioedema because we are speaking here about the ACE which is increasing level of blood kinine by inhibiting the angiotensin converting enzyme and sacopatril inhibiting the NEPRI license, so if they are taken simultaneously, they would result in significant increase in predikinine with risk of life-threatening angioedema. And in patients with significant hyperkalemia, like potassium more than 5, we need to have more frequent monitoring to check any significant rise in the potassium level. And we need to look out for certain drug interactions which are nearly the same as in ACE and ARP, like potassium supplements, potassium spurring diuretics, MRA, which are commonly prescribed as an essential medication for heart failure, renin inhibitors, which as we mentioned, they are not approved in heart failure, non which have nephrotoxic effect, trimethoprime and sulfamisoxazole, and low salt substitutes, which may have a high potassium content. What is the dose that we are going to start with? We usually start with 100 mg twice per day, reaching a target dose of 200 mg twice per day. But we need to remind ourselves that we can use a lower dose in selected situation of 50 mg twice per day, like borderline low systolic blood pressure. Patients who are ACE or ARB naive would prefer to start with a lower dose, estimated GFR between 30 and 60, or patient with chronic liver disease child B, in this case it is preferred to start with a lower dose. And it is preferred not to divide the tablet into two halves in some cases because here we are speaking about a combination of two medication this may jeopardize the efficacy of the medication the next question what are the setting in which we are prescribing ARNI in a stable heart failure patients in outpatient setting and also we can prescribe it in patients hospitalized with worsening heart failure after stabilizing them the same conditions for ACE and ARP 
and in NEHA class 4 patients with severe heart failure or those with current recent exacerbation should be referred for specialist advice before prescribing ORNI. And now is the precautions that you are going to follow while prescribing ORNI. They are nearly the same as the ACE inhibitors and ARBs. First, you need to check baseline kidney function and electrolytes. Start with a low dose. Double the dose after at least two week intervals. Aim for the target dose or the highest tolerated dose and consider reducing the diuretic dose that this patient is taking where appropriate because we are speaking here about significant natriuretic effect of the ORNI. Then we need to recheck kidney function one to two weeks after starting ORNI and one to two weeks after pushing the dose. Then monitor the kidney function every four months. Don't forget that specialist advice should be sought if you decide that you need to stop ORNI in rare situations in order to assess the benefit versus risk. We mentioned before the specialist heart failure nurse that may help the patient regarding the medication and the up titration of the dose. And now with the same clinical problems that we have discussed in the last video with ACE and ARBs, like asymptomatic low blood pressure, we mentioned that this does not require any change in therapy as it is expected. But in case of symptomatic hypotension, we need to reassure the patient first and telling him that dizziness is common as a start and may improve with time. But in some cases, we may need to reduce or even stop nitrates, calcium channel blockers and other vasodilators if possible. And in some cases, if there are no signs or symptoms of congestion, we can consider reducing the diuretic dose in order to improve the blood pressure and perfusion status. Regarding the cough, as we mentioned in the last video, that it can be caused by pulmonary congestion or lung disease. So we need to exclude these two pathologies before assuming that it is induced by the ARNI and it doesn't usually require treatment discontinuation. But if an irritating cough develops affecting sleep and it is proved to be due to ARNI as it recurs after its withdrawal and re-challenge, in this case, we can substitute the ARNI by only angiotensin receptor blocker as here we abolish the neprilysin, which is increasing the level of bradykinin. The most serious complication of worsening kidney function and hyperkalemia has the same management plan as with ACE inhibitors and ARPs. GFR is expected to drop down to 30 or more and increase in potassium to less than 5.5 millimole per liter. In this case, we can continue ORNI, but if there's a reduction in GFR down to less than 30 or increase in potassium to more than 5.5, in this case, we need to stop ORNI and seek the advice of a nephrologist in order to decide what we are going to do. In case of excessive rapid rise in creatinine or potassium, but didn't reach the cut point to stop ORNI, in this case, we can consider stopping concomitant nephrotoxic medication like tansetroidal, consider stopping potassium sparing diuretics, reduce the dose of diuretics if there are no congestion, and in some cases, if it's still the problem persistent, we can halve the dose of ORNI and recheck kidney function within one to two weeks. And finally, with the advice that we are going to give to the patient, explain the expected benefits, Tell him that symptoms may take few weeks or few months to improve after starting ORNI. He needs to report any principal adverse effect like dizziness or cough and avoid non steroid and not prescribed by a physician or salt substitutes high in potassium content. So the same take home message as in the last video that monitoring kidney function is an ongoing cornerstone in the pathway of prescribing ACE inhibitor, ARP as well as ORNI. And baseline blood pressure and kidney function are essential in order to select the appropriate dose of ARNI in order to avoid any clinical deterioration after starting it. Thank you very much for watching this video and wait for the next medications that we are going to speak about tips and tricks regarding its prescription.